Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church here at 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, right here on the corner, here by the park, here in the midst of Harlem. As you can tell, I'm stealing myself and asking the Holy Spirit to be with us in worship today. When I grew up in church, they would say the devil is always busy. Well, I happen to agree with that sentiment today because everything that is trying to go wrong is trying to do its best, but we are not going to pay attention to that. We are simply going to rest, rule, and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us today in our worship. So we welcome you, and we welcome you with gratitude, and we're going to ask that the Holy Spirit's presence be with you, as it is that you'll see in our scripture with Jesus in the waters of the Jordan River. You know, at St. James, we begin our worship service with our opening psalm that is found in our lectionary. Because what better way to begin worship than to respond to the Holy Word? So our psalm for the day today is Psalm number 29. Psalm number 29. Here to this hymn to God, to the God of the storm, the God who conquers water, the God who makes order out of chaos. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord thunders. The Lord over mighty waters battle. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. When the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. Now may the Lord give strength to his people, and may the Lord bless his people with peace. You have just heard Psalm 29, verses 1 through 10, our lectionary scripture ascribing all power, honor, honor and glory to a God who brings us out. I now introduce you our ruling elder, Andrea Bradford. Ruling elder Andrea Bradford is and is down south but she's with us and here in heart and here in our worship service as our liturgist so ruling elder andrea bradford please unmute yourself and lead us into our opening prayers of devotion this morning to god yes and good morning everyone good morning it is so good to be with you today i'm in huntsville alabama where it's um in the mid 50s in terms of temperature and a lot warmer in our hearts here yeah. and as, as we all worship together. And so we continue with this beautiful service honoring the baptism of our Lord with our call to worship. Feel the holiness mm. in the air. We are in the presence of God at this moment uh, and we come to worship. Since the last time we met, God has done some amazing things in our lives. Sister, brother, speak your testimony. When we witness together, we praise God. Well, we are in the land of the living yet another day. We are breathing the crisp air of God's glory. 
Has God kept a song of joy in your heart? Did you pray and feel God doing a new thing? Even with 1,000 tongues and 10,000 hours, there are still not enough words or time to tell all the marvelous miracles of God, both great and small. Rather than name them one by one, we will let our worship show God our bountiful blessing. Hallelujah. And for this, we have our classic hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Those of you who are here, you see the hymn number in your bulletin. It is hymn number 263. ourselves this morning. We center ourselves for this worship together, and we also center ourselves from the troubles of the world. Yes. And, and as we pray together, we come together. Communal prayer is powerful. Hmm. And so we enter this time of prayer by letting God know of our adoration, of our thanks, of our thanksgiving for all that God does for us, our prayer of adoration. Our gladness beams radiantly like, and we are like the faces of flowers turning to face you hmm. as you manifest in our hearts. And like dandelions, we take root in your foundation, yes. reaching outward through the earth with your gospel, spreading the good news. Yeah. The good news of salvation gives us a new song to sing. Mm. And we dance to the rhythms you place in our hearts. Mm. Your delicate, holy power hovers over us like a dove, loving us with your pleasure for who we are becoming. You could easily give up on us, and yet you hold fast, guiding, protecting, making us blessed beings able to call Christ our brother and to call you our own. Amen. Amen. Please forgive me. I had to make sure we were broadcasting on Facebook Live as well. So here's this Brazilian melody, melody 
Oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord. Oh, sing God a new song. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. By his holy power, our God has done wonders. By his holy power, our God has done wonders. By his holy power, our God has done wonders. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. So dance for our God and blow all the trumpets. So dance for our God and blow all the trumpets. So dance for our God and blow all the trumpets. Oh, sing to our God and sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God in a melody that we may not be familiar with, but it's a beautiful set of words. We sing, we sing, we adore God. And God knows that we adore the things that God does for us. God also knows that we sometimes don't do our very best at being and becoming what God has intended for us. And so we come together to offer these words of confession and continued prayer to God for God's help in allowing us to become more like what God sees in us every day. This call to confession says, the truthful, adoring words bring a smile to the soul of God. And the truthful confession stirs the compassion of God's heart. Yes. With the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts. Now let us speak our confessions to the smiling face of God yeah. to stir the compassionate grace towards us. Amen. We say our prayer of confession together. Dear, Dear God, God, often we run from the mistakes that we make instead of facing them to see what we can learn. You watch us day by day, at times turning right when you tell us to go left. We get up on our own when you advise us to sit still and wait. Even when we come to you with the troubles in our way, we are ashamed to speak to you until we have exhausted all our own ideas. While you simply wonder, my child, when will you come to me? And then finally, scared and tired, we come to you at midnight, begging for your help. You seem to be our last resort instead of our go-to resource. We confess that we rely on our own human ways instead of being in your will. Please cure us of our foolish pride and allow us to draw closer to you, to share our joys, not just our midnight fears. Please help us to know that your love is there for us to share the joys of blue skies, giving us the strength to face twilight's uncertainty. Let us have a moment of silent confession about all those times when we tried to make it happen on our own, only to go to God in our final moment, rather than going to God first.
God, we lift these prayers to you. Let all God's people say, Amen. some powerful words or what? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So we we thank you, God. Yes. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to us all the time. Yes. Even when we don't need to pray, we think, mm-hmm. but you're there anyway. Mm-hmm. And you say that when we say we're sorry, that you forgive us. Mm-hmm. Those are some powerful words. You forgive us. Mm -hmm. We have that assurance of your forgiveness. The light of day and the dark of night both belong to me, dear child. Mm -hmm. I'm always here for you with the mercy of forgiveness for your selfish (laughs) self-reliance. And the grace to see you through to the other side of your biggest failure. Yes. I love you no matter what. I love you no matter what. And in you, I am well pleased. How's that for God's assurance? (laughs) Amen. 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 And let us now sing this song together that I bring to you from my memory of my mom's twin sister, Aunt Pat, singing this song. Oh, joys are flowing like a river since the Comforter has come. He abides with us for trusting heart his home we sing blessed quietness holy quietness what assurance in my soul on the stormy seas jesus speaks to me and the life and health and my gladness all around this heavenly guest conquered unbelief and all my sadness changed our weariness to rest so blessed quietness holy quietness what assurance in my soul on the stormy seas jesus speaks to me and the billow ceases to roll and like the rain that falls or snow from the heavens like the sunlight comes from the sky so the holy spirit oh it is given come into us from on high so blessed quietness holy quietness what assurance in my soul yes on the stormy sea salvation when we always see his face and what a perfect oh habitation what a quiet resting place oh blessed quietness holy quietness what a soul on the stormy seas Jesus speaks to me and the billows cease to roll Amen 
Amen. Amen and amen. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you, Sandra, for saying very nice. And thank you, Karen Eubanks, for wow, 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 ouch. Don't wait until midnight. <laughs> because you know, Karen, Karen, you know that when, you, when I sing that song, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. So <laughs> I get you on that. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I've been being ouched all week. So thank you both for those comments in the chat. I uh, know, appropriate, right? Isn't it appropriate? And since we are actually on reading these comments out loud, feel free to remember that at any time you can write to us in the chat and other folks online will be able to see and participate with you in the nether sphere, in the atmosphere, um, mm -hmm. through our chats and through our conversations. Mm -hmm. That also um, speaks to you all who are on Facebook Live, all of your chats and all of your comments and your blessings to us will also be read. So make sure that you understand that with this, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. Thank God for your blessings this week. Thank God for your blessings this week. Yeah. Thank God for your blessings this week. And I thank God for being here with us at 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue here on the corner yeah. across from St. Nicholas Park <laughs> in that little place called a village called Harlem in this sprawling metropolis called New York City. We are grateful to be here today. Um, as you can see from our slide, this is just a slide that gives you some information about our congregation and our church, um, our email address, our phone number if you would like to call us, and you can also write us through the mail. I'm not gonna call it the snail mail because I have too much pride in the postal system and my family members that got out of poverty by working for the Postal Service <laughs> and getting that government job. So I want to give thanks to that and invite you to write us. Your cards that have been coming in, your thoughts and your prayers have been pretty overwhelmingly joyful to hear from you all out there and from you all in here how the worship is still touching you and how the worship is still, how the Holy Spirit is still reaching you and speaking and working in your life, just in your little notes and your cards that you send has been a blessing throughout this pandemic. So I want to continue, I want you to continue to feel free to write to us your cards and your notes and your letters to send them through the mail. It's nice to have something in our hands mm -hmm. that we can touch as well. But that notwithstanding, you can also visit our website <laughs> at www.stjamesharlemnyc.org, all lowercase letters, www. St. James Harlem, nyc.org. Well, you'll see on that front page a PayPal donation at the very bottom. It's a button. And if you press on that, you'll see that we take donations and offerings through PayPal. We'll remind you that there is a 2.2% fee that PayPal takes away. And if you use your debit card, that there is also, um, I believe it's a, a, a 30 cent fee or something like that. We were going over those fees yesterday in our session meeting. But just so that you know that we, fees withstanding, we appreciate everything that comes to us. And we are working our best to diligently put it forward for how the ministry is going to be working in St. James this year, next year, and in time and more to come. Because we want to leave something for the generations to come. And in leaving something for the generations to come, let's get them in here so that we can show them the ways in which they need to go so that they will not stray from their ways in their home. Hmm. For those of you who are interested in reading African-American authors or women authors or other kinds of different, different kinds of reading that you may not hear about on the New York Times bestsellers list, I bring you a quote today from Amaka Imani Sazana, who wrote a book called Heart Crush. She's a woman um, who actually writes out of Mississippi. She's a Southern US woman. Um, she writes out of Mississippi and her writing, I loved this when I was looking this up today about her, that she started writing because she was, only because she was inspired by Maya Angelou. Hmm. And so you can find her quotes all over the place and you can find her books all over the place. But hear this powerful quote from her, which sort of revved me up a little bit this week as I was putting the bulletin together. And she says, when God takes out the trash, don't go back digging through it. Trust him. <laughs> when God takes out the trash, don't go digging back through it. Trust him. 
<laughs> Thanks be to God for that wonderful, wonderful saying from Amaka Imani Mkosazana. Ha, how's that? <laughs> for, that's why Healy presents the pronunciation. I love that. Tomorrow, um, we have, I have the wrong date up here, Sunday, January the 2nd. <laughs> but I do have the right date for when we'll have Bible study tomorrow, January 10th, 2022. Once again, if you go on our website, www.stjamesharlemnyc.org, and you go to our last calendar page, on Mondays, you'll see that it says Bible study. If you click on that, you'll find the actual Zoom information. We don't publish that um, too publicly so that we can sort of sort of look who's coming in and look who's coming out. One of the things you should understand, with, which is why Brother Ruling Elder Chris Bozel is still letting people in and out of our room, of our Zoom room, is because people have taken it upon themselves around the country to actually sort of peek into different Zoom rooms and start to cause trouble. So we're just sort of doing our due diligence and making sure that we are caring for one another and caring for each other. So with that Bible study link on our webpage, it opens you immediately into the room um, and I facilitate that particular thing. But you see our scriptures. Our scriptures for the second ordinary Sunday and second Sunday in ordinary time. Whew, uh, first reading was Isaiah 62 verses one through five. Just a little bit of Bible information. The book of Isaiah is basically broken down by, um, by biblical scholars into three sections. The first section um, is very much the prophecy about being taken into exile. The second section, um, which we'll be reading from today, is basically when God is calling and when Isaiah is saying that God is going to bring forth a Messiah that is going to let us go back to our homeland. And then the third section, which we'll be reading from next week in the 60s, it really speaks to um, God's following through on God's promises. So that's just a little bit of information for you. We'll also be reading from Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Um, we'll look at that and see if we may need to add and expand the entire psalm because I don't like to pull out too many little pieces without the context. Our second reading will be 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. This is the chapter before the love chapter. So this is a very interesting chapter to read because we all remember that, you know, if I, if I, remember, but if I remember not love, if I am not love, if I have not love, and it's so beautiful at weddings and other opportunities that we hear that. But the whole book, the writing of Corinthians is a, a tongue wagging from, from Paul. He's shaking his finger at them saying, you haven't been doing this, you haven't been doing that. And chapter, verse 12, chapter 12, actually really hones in on a lot of his criticism of the Corinthian community, which is why he responds with saying, we all must have love. So that's a little bit of Bible study as well. And then we'll, from our gospel, be reading John 2, verses 1 through 11. And we'll talk more about that on Monday evening as we've been talking about the legacy of the Gospel of John and what they call the Johannine scriptures, John 1, 2, 3, and the revelation um, that was given to John in the book of Revelations. So subscribe to our social media, check out our website and all that other good stuff, and we hope that you can join us and be with us. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment just to make sure that I am okay and see what my next slide is. Oh, our next slide is our thank you slide. I want to thank our team. Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford is our liturgist, musician, Ruling Elder Oscar Maxwell, who didn't wait till midnight to practice that song. <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome back Chris Bozel um, as our Zoom technician. Chris, we welcome you back. We missed you. And we thank you. We thank you for being there. We thank you all for your sharing your gifts with love dedication, spirit, and enthusiasm. Um, just so that you know, we also have a permission to share many of our um, lyrics from our onelicense.net. So that keeps us above board and above the law and making sure that musicians get their, get their coinage for the stuff that they're, that's used by them. There are several churches across the country that don't give credit to the musicians, that don't allow the musicians to collect their royalties, but we believe that an artist is always worth their due. Mm. 
By the way, um, when you look at the final screen or when you go back to look at this on YouTube, I ask that you pause for a moment just to look at the bulletin cover and, and you'll see it at the end of service today. This is a beautiful um, representation of our scripture today. This is of our, an entire season. This image that you see here that I'll show you that you'll see later captures the birth of Jesus, the baptism of Jesus, and the heavens separating and the spirit descending, this yellow triangle that you see, that you'll see. It's a beautiful piece that is in part of the stained glass windows in a church in Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you. And now, um, before we do our piece of Christ, hi, Amen. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? Oh, Everybody's been asking about you and thinking yeah. about you. And here they are. Yes. He's got his energy back. We've been praying for you so that you know that we've been praying and we're happy to see you. <laughs> Kathleen said the prayers must have worked and I think I can say, yes, they definitely have. <sighs> Brand new, I love it. It's so good to see you. Thank you and we're, we're grateful to God that God has made this last strain of Omicron not as virulent as the first so that we can, even though it's been mommy duty as we talked about last week, um, we are grateful that the storm has passed. Thanks be to God. Hello. Amen. Amen. Um, so I, right now, I also want to ask if, if D.T. Wella is um, online, if he can unmute himself. Are you here, D.T.? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, D.T. Good Brothers morning. Brothers and sisters, in our bulletin today, we have, um, in our worship service today, we're going to introduce a new member to our congregation. If you remember months and months ago, a young Liberian man walked into the church and said, when we, when we stood up for asking people where you come from and getting their words, he said, well, I was sort of ushered into the United States from Liberia um, through a Presbyterian church, St. Luke's Presbyterian church, actually, in, in the Midwest. And he said, wherever I go in the country, I try and make sure I worship at a Presbyterian church. As you all know, there are several Presbyterian churches north Presbyterian Church of South, and he made his way here and found it comfortable enough to say, after all this time, I think I want to join this church. Yeah. So today, we will hear and we will have um, him brought in as a new member by transfer to St. James Presbyterian Church. Let me just get the right liturgy in this particular book. So let me find it, because it's, but first let me ask, is there a member of the session that wishes to present, that wishes to present this new member to us? I know there is, because I talked to you yesterday. Eric? Yes, sir. Do you, do you bring forth and do you bring forth on behalf of the session D.T. Wella for membership to St. James Presbyterian Church? Yes, I do. Thanks be to God. He was voted in yesterday at Amen. our session meeting and we want to bring him in today. Morning, Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to use this particular liturgy which will also reaffirm your baptism. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hear also these words from the Holy Scripture. Do you not know? that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism unto death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. And so we thank you, Eric, once again, on behalf of the session for bringing forward D.T. Willett. Yes, uh, now, you may welcome. wonder what D.T. stands for, and I'm going to ask 
UDT to say, even though you, you've changed your name to, the, to DT, the initials, without um, any um, punctuation, which will be in your certificate. But if you could tell us uh, the pronunciation of your, of your full name. Oh, uh, D stand for wallet, or D, D stand for David, or uh, T stand for through ball wheel. It's a, a, a dialect, yeah, tribal name. So through ball wheel means the road from the interior going to Monrovia, the capital city, through ball wheel. Um, and this last name is wallet, mean worth. Very good. One of the things I love about names from the continent is that every name has a meaning and every child is, understands the meaning of their particular name. So I didn't want us to go without understanding, DT, your you. name and understanding, especially that you are named now and chose that name in honor of your father who was killed in the upset in Liberia. So we give thanks to God for him and for the Presbyterian Church. Here now, David, I'm going to ask you some questions, DT, and hear this profession of faith. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. And in embracing this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning away from evil and turning to Jesus. As God embraces you within the covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith in the church, the faith in which we and in which you have been baptized. So answer these questions for me, DT. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Yes. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and his love? Do you? Yes. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you, with God's help? Yes. You see how you feed, it, feed everybody the line so that they know what to say, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to now um, bring forward our confession as well um, that we will all read together. It is in page 13 of your blue hymnals, and I will put the slide up and share that for you so that we can say the Apostles' Creed um, in honor of what we believe in. And David, if you could read, DT, if you could read this out loud um, when it is on the screen, and we will read it together. And it reads as it says here, let us say together. I believe in God, believe in the, God Father Almighty, the Father Almighty, creator, creator of heaven, of heaven and, earth. and earth. I believe in, believe Jesus, in Christ, Jesus Christ, God's only, God's only Son, Son, our Lord, our Lord who, is who was conceived by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, born under the Virgin, under Mary, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, crucified died, 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 he ascended, he ascended into, heaven. into heaven. He is he seated, seated at the right, at hand, right hand of the Father. And he will and come, come to judge the living, the living and the dead. I, I believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, Spirit the Holy the Catholic, Holy Church, Catholic Church, Church, the communion the of saints, of sins, the forgiveness, forgiveness of, sins, of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and of life, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. amen. And amen knowing that when we say the Holy Catholic Church with the small c, we're meaning the church universal. Hear now these questions to you again, DT. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you, with God's help? Yes, I will. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers, will you, with God's help? Yes, I will. So we say the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gifts of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. 
in the time of Noah. You destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new meaning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us all that we may have the power to do your will to continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 So we have reminded ourselves that we are all baptized and covered by the baptismal waters in the covenant of God. So by DT's membership today, St. James, all of you, remember your baptismal vows. Remember that you are grafted into Christ. Remember that through your grafting unto Christ, you have said yes to being a member of this congregation. And in doing so, you're not just a member of, but you're the part of the body in Christ with one another and for one another. So David, we ask God to uphold your spirit, give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. DT, child yes. of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and grafted into Christ forever. So on this baptism Sunday we, of Christ, we use this liturgy to say that you are now grafted, not only into Christ, but onto the congregation of St. James Presbyterian Church. Amen. Amen. DT, have, having been received into the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church through baptism, God has made you a member of the household of God to share with us the priesthood of Christ. So we will welcome you in just a moment as I will share the screen for ruling elder Andrea Bradford to lead us into our peace. And as we are led into our peace, we will welcome DT with the peace of Christ. Ruling elder Andrea Bradford. Yes, and good morning, DT. It's so wonderful to have you with us. Yesterday's conversation with the session was so uplifting and so promising, and it was so great to hear you and to know that you are now a part of this community of love and worship. And so I take this personal privilege to, to welcome you to St. James. Thank you. Um, our peace together, and we will share this now with our newest member. Yes. It, it says, in the form of a dove, the peace of Christ flew in stillness above his head, mm. and it served as a blessing of his baptism. May this peace of Christ rest, rule, and abide with each of you. And also oh, with you. you. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can all be able to see one another and share with one another the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen. Welcome to everyone. Peace to everyone. Congratulations. Welcome, DT. Thank you. Welcome, I shall be. I see you. I see you. Good morning. Hi, thank you. Anthony. Thank you. Look like Leslie. Thank you. I shall be. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace of Christ with you. Love you. Look who's here. Jones. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's good to see you. Yeah, glad that you're better. You do it, Amos. Yeah. Amen. 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 I love them having the uh, piano cam here. <laughs> Watch Oscar. That. Amen and amen. amen. God is good when? All the time. And all the time, God is good. We are so grateful that God, even during the time of pandemic, God continues to bless St. James. God continues to bless each of you. And God continues to bless all of us. We are grateful. And we say to you in just a moment of thanks and praise, oh God, we say thank you. And how good it is, how good it is to be in your presence again with our bank with Spiderweb. And we are grateful to Amen. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. So how beautiful, it's not the time yet in our worship service, but this is just a friendly reminder from Spider-Man and from Amen to give with a full heart and to make it, make it rain as it were. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Amen, for that reminder. <laughs> Ruling Elder Andrea Bradford, let us move forward into our prayers, I mean our scriptures. Yes, 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 what a, what a wonderful time. We have so much to celebrate today. And we welcome David again, DT. David, you have to tell us how to pronounce your name. It is such a beautiful name. And so we, we, we want to learn to pronounce it. Don't, don't make us be lazy and just say DT. <laughs> so thank you for being here and joining in, in our loving community as we worship God together. And now we move into our time of scripture the time of hearing and reading the word. We enter this time together with our prayer of illumination. Please say it with me. Holy God. As you revealed his assignment of making the way clear for Christ, may we be so blessed. Open this word unto us so that we may make, clear the, make the way clear for Christ to our broken world. Amen. 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 And we have three scriptures this morning. The first is from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. 
But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Yes. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Mm. And from the New Testament, our second reading is from the eighth chapter of Acts. Acts, the eighth chapter, the 14th through the 17th verses. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not only been baptized, for yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hmm. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And our gospel, the gospel according to Luke, the third chapter, verses 15 through 18, and then verses 21 and 22. Luke 3 beginning at verse 15. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. Hmm. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Hmm. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven op was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Hmm. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will be meditating on those words today, of the idea of expectations revealed but not seen. So just hold that in your mind while we have a small little conversation with Shelby and some of our other young people that are online today. As I share this image with you all and with them, this is an image that struck me. 
As you can see, this is a, the Holy Spirit and Fire baptismal font. And the painting is in Mexicali, Mexico. In our scripture today, we hear about the Holy Scripture, the Holy Spirit coming down in bodily form in the dove. You can see in this particular painting here and in all of our Presbyterian bulletin on the back when you see the insignia that that dove that is coming down into the open book in our little symbol in the Presbyterian church, that that also signifies the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit can be both the fire and the dove. Because in about a couple of months, we'll be celebrating Pentecost Sunday when the tongues of fire descended upon the disciples. So you see that this holy fire that's here, this Holy Spirit that is coming down is actually a flame and a dove. Now we can talk about that a lot later. But what I want you to think about, and I want to clear something up in terms of our cultural understanding, is what is the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? What is the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? Well, to be honest with you, ruling elder Chris Bozel theologically can explain it much more importantly and historically than I could. But I can tell you this, there is no difference. <laughs> so, and, and what has happened in our, in our culture is that when people decided around 300, 400 years ago, no, 300, 400 century, the third and fourth century, they decided that we wanted to stick with the Holy Spirit because it sounded better and it seemed better a representation than the Holy Ghost. And yet, in congregations and in cultures of people, especially around in Harlem, they don't say anything about the Holy Spirit. They talk about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. The Holy Ghost makes you speak these tongues. The Holy Ghost makes you dance. The Holy Ghost does all this sort of stuff to you. And what the difference between what the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost has happened historically is that the Holy Ghost has been made to be demonized, like you're being haunted by someone, and the Holy Spirit has been made to seem as if, oh, it's this good heavenly thing that's coming down. Mm -hmm. There is no difference. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are ways that God comes to us and God speaks to us. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are both comforters. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are both advocates. They're both on our side. Let's just clear this one thing up. It's very easy to say that the Holy Ghost needs to be the Holy Spirit because 500 years ago, they wanted people who were being colonized in Africa to stop thinking about their ancestors as holy. So they changed words in the Bibles that they have to tell people to come to Jesus so that we would focus on the Holy Spirit and not bring our cultural ancestors along with us. So what we're doing nowadays, and this is why I wanted to talk to you about it not being any different, is that God speaks through our history, through our ancestors, through our culture, white, black, Asian, Latinx, it doesn't matter. That spirit that we hold on to, that ghost, is something that can rest with us and is not spooky, it's not scary. When we talk about the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, we talk about it as a blessing. A blessing that comes from Christ to say, I will leave this presence with you. So if it helps, instead of Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit and arguing over whether we're being haunted by ghosts, think of it as a holy presence. Hmm the holy presence that is always with us. 
So our young people, what I'm saying to you today is you will go into many situations where they will say, oh, you a Presbyterian, y'all don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, you're, you're, you're an African-American Presbyterian, you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. But we can all say, no matter what our culture, no matter what our understanding, that what Jesus is saying with this Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is that I will be with you always. And that is all that matters when we talk about the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. We're only just saying that Christ has promised to be with us. So don't get caught up in political correctness about ghost or spirit. Get caught up in the presence of Christ being with you always. Most gracious and loving God, sometimes we deal with some of these political situations that have to do with our cultural understanding of things in America, and we go, what in the world are we talking about this in church for? Well, we talk about it, oh God, because we don't want anybody taking away our blessing of you. You are with us, walking with us, and talking with us, and being with us. So we say, Holy Spirit, when you rain down, Holy Ghost, when you rain down on us, that you are bringing Jesus into our midst. And what God has given to us for our salvation, can't nobody take away in a silly argument over word about a ghost or a spirit. Help us to know that you are with us. Stay with us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide over your church and over our minds. Holy Bless you on your destination. <laughs> Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters today, I won't hold you long. We only have a, a little while to speak on thinking about expectations revealed but not seen. I wanted to speak about this specifically. Expectations, expectations revealed but not seen. This particular text of Isaiah that I was speaking to you about today, this is a part of a promise of God that the people of Israel have been waiting to come to fruition for a very, very long time. Isaiah and Jeremiah are both these two prophets of Israel that are talking about, we aren't doing what God has called us to do. We aren't listening what God has called us to do. So beware and be prepared. We will be conquered. We will be taken away. We will be enslaved. We will become a diaspora people. There's no getting around it. There's nothing that we can do about it until God is ready. But know this, both Isaiah and Jeremiah, all, they both wrote about this idea that God has promised that we're gonna get out of this mess. God has already revealed a way that we are going to get out of this mess, that we are going to be brought back from exile. Now we hear this in our word. We can read all of the 60 plus chapters of, of Isaiah, all the chapters of Jeremiah, and we can say, oh, well, when we read this, we know that this is okay, that this is all going to work out, that they're all going to get back to Israel, that God's going to get them back to their time period. But imagine being a people that have been picked up and taken away. Imagine being a people where your temple, where God lives, is destroyed. Where your hope lives is destroyed. And you are taken up and carried away. You have no military might. You have no finances, as it were. And out of all the tribes and all of the countries and all of the nations that are listed in these scriptures, Egypt, Seba, in and our, in our, in our, in our Psalm even, Syria, Lebanon, all of these places, nobody is going to help you. You are going to be stuck here. But how do you live in your stuckness when you know that God has already promised that you're going to come out? That's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to sit in your mess 
knowing that God is already has a way out for you without saying when God, how God, and why God aren't you making it happen now. The expectations that God is going to do what God is going to do is so simple and revealed in our texts, it's revealed in our lives. We get stuck on our expectations that God has revealed of getting us out. We get stuck because we can't really see it. We get stuck because we can't see the way that God has for us to go forward. And we're so busy wanting to see the future, wanting to see the signs, wanting to see something that'll just make us smile to say, I can hold on just a little while longer that everything's going to be all right. But that sometimes you just got to sit in your mess and know that the expectations that have been revealed to you are revealing themselves to you at God's pace. Not at your pace. Some people know what I'm talking about. When, when, when you're running up against a system, a system of your own trauma, a system against your own addiction, a system against your own poverty, and you just say, God, I believe in you. I do believe that you're going to bring me out, but when are you going to do it? We know that you have revealed your expectations. Mary said it a few weeks ago, that the high will be lowered and the low will be lifted up, that the mighty will lose their strength and those who are weak will gain might and strength. We heard it from Hannah. We hear it from Mary. Mary, Mary, we know that God is a God of the oppressed. We know that God is on our side. And yet we must confess that because we cannot see it, we know it, that the expectation has been revealed, but it's okay to say, but in this moment that I can't see it, I'm not sure if I can believe it. Say, what? <laughs> I can profess an understanding of the expectation revealed, and I can still have doubt because I cannot see? Yes. Do you know why? <laughs> because in those moments, that is the crucible moment in which God purifies. God purifies us when we are in the midst of our doubts. <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? When we don't know where to go, don't know what to do, when we can't believe because we can't see it, that's when God says, stop. And now, let me burn all the worry away. Let me burn all the, the concern away. Let me wash it all clean because you've had these scales on your eyes for so long about the expectation of what it might be like that you won't let me lead you into the revelation. So in this crucible moment where you are doubting whether or not I'm going to bring you through, even though you read my word, even though you pray, even though you testify about what God has done for you and the goodness that God has done for you, in the midnight hour, don't wait till midnight, that midnight hour when we're like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. That is the moment in which God says, finally, <laughs> finally, you're letting go of your humanity and recognizing that we are divine together and we are going to work this through together. That's when we let go. As they say, let go and let God. That's when you say, there is something bigger than me that I have to give up to. And when you do that, that is when God pushes you through the cracks and says, now this is what I was talking about. Now you can see it. I've been thinking about the past 16 years of my life. The past 16 years of my life have been a very, it's a crucible for me. And it has been how God has been revealing stuff to me over and over and over and over again. And yet I keep walking like one of those wind-up dolls up against the wall, up against the wall, up against the wall until I ran out of the energy and God said, no, now this door is open for you because you were banging your head up against the wrong wall. My brothers and sisters, we can celebrate that the expectations of God 
are revealed, yes. And we will see them in their due course. What made me think about all of that this week? Well, I thought about it especially because in this particular text in John where the Holy Spirit comes down, there's a lot of debate in academic circles about whether or not the people around Jesus saw the Holy Spirit, heard the voice say, behold, this is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. You see, there was an expectation that was revealed in the prophecies of the people of Israel about a Messiah that was coming to change things up. And yet we know for a fact in our belief system that when Jesus came, the expectation that had been revealed to them when he walked into the Jordan River that day People still didn't believe it because they didn't see it clearly. They were looking in their own ways for their own explanation of what a Messiah might be, for their own idea of what my salvation might be, rather than remembering that God said, my salvation for you, you will not know until it washes over you. Your sight is not my sight. Your, your vision is not my vision. How many people, just imagine if you were there having turned around. We've spoken about John for a couple of weeks now. Can you imagine being the Jordan River and trying to finally say, I turn around, I repent my sins, I will go forth and I will sin no more. I will go forth and I will be with my God. You're so busy looking at your own self that you forget that the Savior has been promised by John. So that when Jesus is standing there in the water, how many people on the side have said, there he is? If on that banks of the Jordan, the expectation that has been revealed by God, if it had been seen by the people of God, how might our Christian story be a little bit different? It was because they didn't see that Christ had a ministry to go forth for all to be able to see how God was revealing what was expected. When the expected is revealed but not seen, we very rarely ask, how will I know I understand the projection and the prophecy of the expectation revealed, Isaiah. I understand it, John, that one is coming after you whose sandals you aren't worth untying. I get it. But how will I know? And that means that we have to get in concert with God and our relationship with God and as for God to allow us to be a part of what it means to see past our sight. Did you hear what I said? To see past our sight. Some people will know what I'm talking about when I say this. It's like getting cataract surgery. You walk around days, years, simply saying, well, my eyesight's getting a little worse. I must be getting, but God has said that there is a way for something to be revealed to you, an expectation. If you just go and get a little surgery, <laughs> you will have clear vision yet again. And how many of us have been hard-headed? for years on end, going around with blurry sight saying, I expect and understand what God is going to do for me. I can see the expectation. I, I know that the expectation has been revealed, but yet our vision is so clouded <laughs> that we haven't allowed God to say, here's the doctor. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit in Christ is our, is our cataract surgeon. 
that is going to allow us to see clearly. Because the seeing, and I know this is a little deep right now, but the seeing is not just so that it can, we can see the beautiful sight and the beautiful pictures of it, but the seeing is so that we can step forward into this new vision and allow God to continue to speak to us. If you are reading your scriptures and you can't quite see it clearly now and God says are you ready to see and you say yes when you go back to that word how it opens itself up in your spirit is completely different God has a way of not just saying, I want you to see what's in front of you. I want you to see what's beyond. That's the promise of God. Expectation revealed. That's in the word. Seeing. That's walking with God. Walking with the Holy Ghost. Walking with the Holy Spirit walking with Jesus to see what lies beyond the front of our faces. Because very often when you want your blessing to be right in front of you, it's a couple of steps in ahead of you. And you have to make the faithful journey to lift up your head and see. One of my favorite songs from Sesame Street, the album in 1969, when I hear that it was released and I hear that there's some good songs on there. (laughs) That was actually the first album that I had. There's a song that Susan sang, the African-American woman on Sesame Street. It's called Nearly Missed. While walking down the street with a hole, I saw a hole in my sneaker an old tin can by the side of the road. I nearly missed a rainbow. I nearly missed a sunset. I nearly missed a shooting star going by. And then Joe Raposo wrote, looking down at the ground means you know where you're going. No head up in the clouds to lead you astray. But you can't ever have any kind of dream that way. Expectations revealed is what happens when you walk looking at a hole in your sneaker. (laughs) Revelations seen are what happens when you see the shooting star going by. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for delving into this idea which will take us some time to soak in at least for this poor sinner here, of what it means for our expectations to be revealed in truth and in love by you. And even though we can't see them, help us to move from not being able to see to realizing that we just aren't looking where you're guiding us to look. May the expectations revealed lead us to see the revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it takes a little bit to (laughs) get your thoughts going in the right place. But this is what happens when we ask the Spirit of God to descend upon our heart. Wean it from the earth through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as thou art, and make me love thee as I ought to love.
descend upon my heart, wean it from earth, through all its pulses move, stoop to my weakness, mighty God, descend upon our heart. Bring the Holy Ghost fire to us to allow our bodies to move in ways that are unexpected. Whether the Holy Ghost touches us and we sit and just shudder and say thank you, or whether the Holy Spirit comes within us and brings us words anew of a fiery tongue. Whether the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit sits and makes us leap to our feet and dance, and as they say, shout, <laughs> not with our voices, but with our feet and our bodies. We claim it all good, O oh God. We claim that we want this spirit to descend upon our hearts so that we can, one, show you how much we love you, and two, so that we can be receptive to your grace and your mercy and all that Christ promised us, all that you promised us in all of your expectations that we need to hold on to and read about so that we can see clearly now that the day and the clouds and the sky are gone. So God, as we say, Spirit, descend upon our hearts. We, we honestly say that we want to open ourselves to you so that you can hear our hearts. Holy Spirit, as you descend upon our hearts, take our prayers that are deepest inside of us and raise them up on wings of love to Christ's ear, to God's very throne, so that we may lay them and leave them at the altar, so that we may lay our trash out and not go back to pick at it and pick it up, but so that we can let it go 
go and that we can let God. We ask you, oh God, right now, Spirit of God, that you descend upon our hearts and to see those that we love and to know that we have these deep desires for them to grow, to be at peace, to be successful. And sometimes we don't see how that's going to happen. So we lay it all at your altar, God, to say, make it happen as your will and help us to continue to pray for those that we love, those that we care about, to move forward and to move through these times of roughness, through these times of bad health, through these times of, 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 of inconsequential understanding of what is going on in this world. Oh God, we can think about it and think about it and we'll, our consequences will not matter what we decide because the world will keep spinning. We ask for you to stop us. Stop us while the world spins so that we may be still in your presence so that we may say, oh God, as the world turns, so we pray to you solely and stilly. As the world spins, God, and we see Kazakhstan bring peace. The world spins, God, we see the Ukraine. God, please bring peace. The world spins, oh God, and we look down and see Colombia in its economic warfare trying to rebound through this pandemic and other countries that are deemed third world trying to struggle. Stop our vision on this so that we can pray for the health and the happiness of people and their children and their families, oh God. We ask that you stop us in this spinning world, oh God, so that we stop being concerned so much about our own travels and our own concerns. So that as the world spins and we are still, we see that we are all connected so that if I pray for you, then I am praying for me. If I'm praying for you to have enough food on your table, I am praying that God will always supply my needs. And I am praying it because I know so, because God has done so already and will do. The prayers that I pray for you, O oh world, sitting in the stillness of God while the world is spinning around me, these prayers that I pray are only prayed because God, you've done it before. You've done it for me. You've done it for the people that we love, O oh God. You've done it for this broken world we find our way in. You, you take the crumbling roofs and you patch them up and you bring us safety. You bring us security. You bring us love. And because you do that, God, we have the old audacity to claim that you can do it for the rest of the world that is spinning around us, for those who are sitting in the jail cells, for those who are in the hospitals, everybody around the world spinning around us, God. We pray that we have an effective prayer, that our prayer will touch, that our prayer will heal, that our prayer will show that God is love. We lift it up now, oh God. We lift it up in this spinning world, in our stillness with you. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God, in hallelujah for knowing that what you said that you would do you do there is no question about your promises oh god there is no question about what you say will be revealed there is no question about what you want us to see in this world there is no question that when the holy spirit came down on christ on that day that those waters were made holy and that they are the same waters that cover us oh god we give you thanks we give you glory we give you praise by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, and thank you, God. Hallelujah, and thank you for all you do. Oh, God, we are just your servants in connection with you one-on-one -on -one while this world spins around us and while we find joy. The concern we had as we prayed for the spinning world has now shifted to this joy of the smile in Colombia, the smile in South Africa, the smile in Canada, the smile in Europe of those children who are just saying, tomorrow is mine and it's going to be a good day. Oh God, we thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your mercy. Be with us now. Give us this joy. Keep us in this, in this holiness. Keep us connected to you in this spinning, spinning world. In this 
Yes, we all pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. one that was the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit <laughs> I'm just glad it was here <laughs> uh, Spirit of God descend upon our hearts as we think about the ministries that we would like to have here in St. James may this love that we had that the world didn't give to us that the world can't take away may it move from our hearts to the world as we give as we give in our offering plate, bless your heart. And as we give online, bless your heart. Whoop. Okay. So you can go to www.stjamesharlemnyc.org and scroll down to the PayPal button or just mail it to 409 West 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, New York, New York, 10031. Dash six four zero zero. Because you can't be God's giving. Again, I said you can't be God's giving. No matter how hard you try to say, well, God, let me give you something for what you did for me. You can't do it. So God only asks for an investment. God's ministries. So we pray for this offering as it comes through the airways, as it comes through the mail, as it has been placed in this plate today. We thank you for our blessings. We thank you for holding us and keeping us. We thank you for allowing us to be able to give a dollar, ten dollars, five dollars, because we know that there are those during this time that have their pockets turned inside out and saying, where will I get food tomorrow? May we be a part of that solution in the long term with our ministries. Bless us and keep us. Hold us and love us as you always do. And we give these that have been given all for you and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now we're going to sing Doris May Aker's song, 358 in your blue hymnal. It's also in the African American Heritage Hymnal. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. The reason why I like this song, Oscar, is because you can sing this song on Zoom and still feel it because we know that it's the presence of the Lord. I don't know if Dor Doris May Akers thought about this and this time that we would be living in when she wrote this song, but she called upon the Holy Spirit to say, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, Stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we will lift our heart in praise. Because without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place and space with one another, but never God's presence.
2022, the season of Epiphany, the baptism of Christ Sunday. We leave you today knowing, knowingly receiving the knowledge that the expectations that God has promised are always revealed in our scripture. But may you see them and beyond your own vision to see where God is calling us, how God is calling us to be anew. Oh.